first woman I, I wanted to introduce is Zubaida. And Zubaida is, um, was the wife of Harun al-Rashid. Um, Harun al-Rashid, they call him the, um, the leader of the believers. Um, he was in himself, he was a really colorful and interesting character with, with so many interesting stories and, and wonderful um, and not so wonderful things that he has done. Um, but Zubaida, which kind of, there are a couple of interpretations for her name. One of them is it's called Little Butterball, as her uncle used to call her, a little butterball, but Zubida Zubaida. Um, but it also means fresh and soft and white skinned. Um, so that's, that's how she was remembered. And she was actually uh, not just a beautiful woman in, in her own beauty, but she was a fashion setter, a trend setter. She was incredibly knowledgeable about political um, maneuvering, uh, not in a manipulative way, but she just really knew how politics worked um, at the time. And while, so she was a double cousin of Harun al-Rashid, her mother, Salsal, was the sister of Harun al-Rashid's mother, Haizuran. And Haizuran herself was an a, a incredible force within the court. So some historians even say that Harun al-Rashid listened to two people, his wife and his mother. Because political decisions and the way it was manu man maneuvered um, and, and constructed was very much linked to the two women he felt the closest to. Now, what Zubaydah did um, with, so when we look at characters like Zubaydah and a couple of other characters where we will look at, we need to think about um, how women created a sense of female power without role modeling, without role models, because of course they were rooted, very much rooted in Islamic history and culture, and they knew whatever they needed, they needed to know about female leading characters. But at the same time, they had to move with the time. They had to be with a different political situation. Um, and they had to bring out elements of female power, which it's really interesting for me to look at it today, because now we have a sort of understanding what female power should look like, but for them, there wasn't anything for them. They had to create it themselves. So Zubaydah was incredibly witty. She was um, courageous. She was modest and she had wisdom, but she also had a real sense of flair and, and kind of zeal for life because she was, I don't know if you know, but she was one of the people who is called to be the mother of, um, you know, the sandals when they put little stones and gems in the uh, leather sandals. Mm -hmm. She was the first one who commissioned people to create sandals wow. where luxury and beauty and practicality just came together. But mm -hmm. her colorful clothes, she used to wear colorful clothes, uh, which was in itself a trend. Um, but you can see that she she wasn't um, a bookish kind of person who had wisdom by bookishness. She had a real flair for life. She loved colors. She loved um, sounds and spices and and actually, one of the things that, that she's known for is that she employed hundreds of women in the palace where she used to live, and they were all Hafiz, Hafiza. So her reasoning was that wherever she was walking around in the palace, she wanted to hear the women reciting the Quran at any time of the day, at any part of the palace, at any point, wherever she went. So she created three shifts, eight hour shifts, and the women were rotating in eight hour shifts, sitting in different positions in the palace. So wherever she walked, she could hear the buzzing, she could hear the Quran being recited. So that was one of one of her um, kind of, um, it really shows her personality. But, but let's not forget, it was also the time where in the palace itself, there was a lot of um, intellectual exchange. There were was, was so many things happening in the palace, but in terms of liter literacy, um, there were poetry competitions. And the way they used to do poetry competitions is that they, a, a poet would write up the poem. And of course, it's a very structured, in Arabic poetry, it's, it's extremely structured and high, you need high knowledge to be able to decipher those poems. So they would put out the words um, of that particular poem on different canvases or sheets of paper or, or papyrus um, on the wall. And they would ask everyone to walk around and make up the poem. And who has, who, 
who could solve the poem, the closest to the original poem, how it was written, would win a prize. And Zubeda was continuously part of that. So she she was highly knowledgeable in putting stanzas together versus how it works with Arabic logic. And it's a very complicated, very complicated thing. Mm. But she 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 used to be continuously part of it. She was very playful. She used to walk around and trying to solve a poem in her head. Um, but one one thing she has also done is that, and this is one of her highest and most no noticeable and noticed um, contribution, is that she was traveling with her husband for Hajj, and she realized that the water was scarce, a the pilgrims were really tired, it was an incredibly difficult journey. So when she came back, she decided that she wants to build a route from Baghdad all the way to Mecca. And she actually commissioned, uh, we can't even quantify how many dollars or how much it would have cost her at that time, um, but she commissioned the project um, with some architects from Baghdad going to the direction of Mecca and for the entire 1,200 kilometers, which is about 900 miles, she would set up 40 stations. And if you do the maths, it's probably around 30 kilometers, which is around the amount of traveling they could do for a day. And mm. each 30 kilometers, they had a caravanserai where there was a mosque, there was a place where the animals could rest and being fed. There was a hotel. There was, you know, food and accommodation available for the pilgrims to go all the way to Mecca. Mm -hmm. And if you think about this, it's actually moved um, over six months of the year. It was a vibrant route. And what she did, this is called Dar, Dar Zubaydah. What she did is she created a entire... I call it a mini silk road, really, because mm. she created an entire way for people to keep exchanging their goods and ideas. And it was an intellectual as, as much as an economical exchange. So for six months of the year, going to Hajj and coming back, that was a very active route um, with the caravanserai continuously being used, um, you know, ex ideas um, exchanged. So there was something about her way of thinking that was looking into the future and this route was used over a thousand years some of the remnants of the walls are still available mm -hmm. um, so her wisdom didn't just look at how do i kind of operate within my palatial home and how do mm -hmm. i manage the political situation it, it, she was really forward thinking about how do i serve and when i'm serving you know th there was there was this there was this vision for for intellectual pursuits which I, I find very attractive um, about her. So, um, so she was um, at the back of it also, we needed to know, we need to know about her, that she was really, really clever the way she was managing her husband's power. And this is something I, I think is another lesson for us is that female power isn't always the loud, aggressive, um, you know, pushing over or powering over somebody it was power with and okay. she she did it amazingly because she uh, there was this little anecdote and i'm gonna stop about her because you know there's some more stuff that i can i can share and feel free to to ask any questions but there was a story when when she was arguing with her husband about the persian suite and they couldn't decide which suite is better so they asked the cardi to come and decide um you know which suite is better and the cardi said look i can't i can't decide i need to try so they gave him a lot of sweets and he started eating it until he couldn't move. And he decided that it was Harun al-Rashid's uh, sweet, who, which is actually better. So Harun al-Rashid gave um, him a thousand dinars as, as a reward. And Zubeda was very clever because um, the Qadi, um, after that, she, she gave the Qadi 999 dinars because she said, I will never want my husband's decision to be looked less than my my contribution so there was an acknowledgement of power but there was also a really interesting way of publicly not humiliating someone who was in a ruling position yet yet because of this Harun Arashid hardly any made any decision without his mother or without his wife so I think it's something to think about something to really look at is that how it it doesn't it's not because these women were behind the walls or behind curtains mm -hmm. or or any other way, but they 
they worked with their men instead of against or powering them over, which I think it's a it's an interesting conversation that we could we could think about. Yeah.